Morning everybody, it's Nick, as you can see, um, yeah, bad head, bad head hair. So um, I woke this morning to uh, watch a very heart-wrenching vlog by a lady who had lost her friend um, only 24 hours ago. She had uh, taken her own life and um, the, the vlog was sharing the sadness and the grief about that, but also the context which was she had been going through a really difficult divorce. She had um, significant um, challenges. She was suffering, um, you know, she was suffering with um, depression and overwhelm and, 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 and all of those, you know, really difficult things that life can sometimes deliver to us and it just all feels too much. But at the same time, um, she was also menopausal. And the point of this was to say, you know, when we when we put all of that together, um, there can be some really, really, really um, horrific consequences. And I don't think it's any coincidence that the statistics showing the rise in suicide rates of middle-aged women, I don't think that's a coincidence. And I wanted to share some quite, um, personal stuff actually from the early days of the menopause with me so um i'll take a deep breath in the early days of the menopause so that's going back about six years ago now uh, before i was really stabilized with um hrt and seeing a menopause consultant and learning about it and empowering myself and trying to um, translate and somebody was telling me I had some really, really dark times and um, I felt many times I really felt of no purpose, of no value, self-esteem was acutely low and um, I did genuinely believe that the world would be better off without me. That's absolutely the truth at that time. Now, I know that there's a lot of stigma and shame with admitting and we feel like that, particularly as a mum. And a wife, because how could I possibly think like that? How could I possibly um, do something like that to my children? But I think that um, the cognitive, rational um, stuff just wasn't wasn't accessible to me in that moment. Um, now, I'm very blessed in that um, I have a really good support network. And actually, um, one of the people who was absolutely fundamental in helping me at that time uh, was my GP. And, um, yeah, it does, uh, it does make me feel sad. And I think that vlog this morning really hit home for me because it, it did take me back to the times when I can really relate. I can relate to how that feels. Now, um, so back to the point, I had a really, um, really, and still have a very good support network. And I was able to talk um, to my GP very honestly and openly about how I was feeling. And she was really proactive in telling me to reach out when those dark times came. And that it didn't matter. It didn't matter how busy she was, how long she was seeing people for. It was just during the surgery and to say I needed, you know, it was it was the safe call. Um, I was also able to be able to speak to my um, to my own husband about it um, and about those feelings and just being given the space and the permission to be able to allow them out um, helped enormously. There's something about that flow. One of the things though that I did start to observe was whenever I got these very, very low points where I, I genuinely just saw, you know, I would be better off dead. Um, was I would notice consistently two or three days after feeling like that, bearing in mind I generally don't have periods um, and I don't even really have any spotting anymore, but this is going back six years. Two or three days afterwards, I would have a little bit of blood. Not a lot, but a little bit of blood. And um, I started to notice a pattern. And that's one of the really big tips that I wanted to share was that I'm, um, and I guess some of it's my background. My background is management consulting and um, 
I used to do a lot of modeling and statistical analysis and performance improvement work. So I was always looking for patterns. I was always looking to join dots. And maybe I just naturally do that to myself, who knows? But I noticed always that two or three days after these very, 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 that's so dark. These places are so dark that you go, um, you really do look over the, the abyss, into the abyss, not over, into the abyss was I would get a spotting two or three days afterwards, just a little bit of blood. And um, and then that mood, it would lift and it would pass. And so um, I spoke to my GP about that. And um, and that was also uh, the time that I started seeing a menopause consultant. And um, of course, what transpired and what came out was that, um, yes, the antidepressants, I did take some antidepressants at that time. Um, they did take the edge off a bit, but they didn't really... They didn't stop the, the ups and downs. And that's how we know, we knew, my GP and I knew that this wasn't purely um, something happening that needed an antidepressant because it wasn't consistent. So when I, um, many years ago, when I had depression after my third child, um, I, w I was really quite depressed with postnatal depression. It was very consistent. There was a consistency to the sadness and the disengagement and the just struggling with life really whereas um what i was experiencing at the start of the menopause was real peaks and troughs you know there wasn't a concept real peaks and troughs um and so that's when we started the journey of um getting me to see a man you know finding a really good menopause consultant and endocologist can never say it right um i think every menopause woman should have access to them these people are specialists in hormones. Why on earth wouldn't we have access to specialists in hormones going through the menopause? I've never really got that. Anyway, um, and, you know, we got on top of my hormone levels, particularly my oestrogen. Particularly my oestrogen. And we also came up with a plan, both um, medical and psychologically, to support me when these lows hit. Now, it did take a while, I would say, um, it took a good couple of years of getting myself, um, um, oh, sorry, brain fog, uh, stable on my HRT. I, but over time, what I gradually noticed was these dips got less. These dips got less and they got less frequent and I was in them for less time. And so that's why that vlog really hit me so hard this morning because, but for the grace of God, um, you, you know, that, that could be any of us, I, I, I guess. And what I know is that having a safe space, somebody safe that I can really tell uh, and share the darkest parts of my shadow self, as I would call it, the darkest parts without judging me, without saying, how could you think that? Because then that silence is us. And that silence leaves it to fester and leaves us it creates that isolation and that shame and leaves us to think less of ourselves um, and to think that we are actually the problem, which is, is not true. So I think a big thing that I learned was being able to really talk very, very honestly, no matter how difficult the content of what I wanted to say or how dark it was, having people that were able to sit in that space with me was hugely, it was life-saving, absolutely life-saving. And that psychologically safe space meant talking to somebody who didn't judge me or change their opinion or what they thought of me as a consequence of what I was saying. And for me, that was my GP, who I will be grateful to until the day I naturally die. Um, and my husband. Um, secondly, it was also uh, really observing myself. And I think that's when I started doing these vlogs and writing actually, because it helped me effectively create a diary. And it helped me become conscious of how I was feeling and what was happening and therefore helped me to join the dots. So I think that educating ourselves on what our body is trying to tell us, that actually, um, I don't think I was genuinely um, suicidal in terms of clinical depression. I think I was having what I would call a hormonal crash, which brings those feelings. That was really helpful to be able to understand 
in a more objective and slightly detached way what was happening with me because what it told me is ah if that's what it is I'll know it'll pass I know it will pass and thirdly um being able to have access to a specialist a deep deeply trained researched um capable empathetic empowering specialist menopause specialist who for the last six years has been helping me understand what's happening to me in the menopause um, and helping me with the treatment plans of what we can do to um to, to get through it to, to get through it and not just to survive but to actually live through it and I felt it was important to share that because I think that sometimes well actually a lot of times we can have we all have a shadow self right we um and we live in a world where you know having those difficult conversations I mean goodness me you know as a soul midwife working at end of life helping supporting people who are dying you see it a lot because um, you know, people obviously sometimes just can't bear to talk about the fact that they are going to die. You know, the, 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 the conversation, uh, particularly for family and loved ones, often focuses on, well, what can we do? How can we, you know, how can we fight this? How can we avoid this? How can we beat this? And actually sometimes, um, actually a lot of time for the for the people who are, are, are dying, they actually need a safe space to be able to talk about um, the fact that they are dying and what it means and what's scaring them, what they want to, what they want to reflect on and talk about whilst they have time to do so. But I think that's a really, um, and that's an uncomfortable and very heartbreaking conversation at times, but it's something, um, I think we need to get more comfortable being able to have. And I think that needs to apply in life generally. I wonder, I, I have no idea who this lady is, uh, very, very, very sad, very very sad set of circumstances and loss of life i've no idea who this lady was um about this vlog i watched this morning but i wonder whether had she had i i don't know if she had um someone to talk to i don't know if she felt able to really say how she was feeling i don't know but i wonder if all of us have that safe space to actually be able to express how we're feeling without being judged if um, all of us have access to a support network that can allow us to really explore that and get to the root cause of what's driving those feelings and also then the medical support of understanding what's happening in our bodies and which of it is you know emotional psychological traumas that need to be supported in more therapeutic ways as opposed to biologically what's happening in our body and what's going wrong and I think the other thing that I'm also learning an awful lot about, particularly in terms of my um, mental health whilst we're on this subject, um, and by the way, the hormonal crashes, um, I haven't had bad hormonal crashes that I've referred to like that for about, um, I would say about two and a half years. So I, th I think the reality is my menopause is moving. I'm moving through it. You know, I'm 52 now. But also I think I have, you know, uh, good support. I have um, HRT implants. I eat a very different diet. I was trying to come up with a, a list actually the other day of what are all of the things, because I know we can be overwhelmed by the advice online, right? If we did it all, we'd never have time to do anything else. But for me, um, I eat much more, my diet is much more, um, yeah, definitely protein and plant-based. So I eat an awful lot more fish than meat nowadays. I used to be a big meat eater. And if I eat meat, I probably only eat something like a cleaner meat, like a fillet steak. I eat a lot of salad and vegetables. Um, I try to stay away from the processed food. Um, I uh, We actually make homemade kombucha at home, um, and that's made a really massive difference. So my gut health, I think there's an awful lot um, we probably need to get better at around our gut health because a lot of our serotonin um, and our hormone um, links you know, our gut is such a big deal, it's untrue. So I do, I'm much more careful about my gut. Um, also, I'm much more careful about managing my energy levels and my um, adrenaline system and cortisol. So, you know, having these 30 minute breaks every four hours or so, I mean, really a break, you know, laying down a bit of Reiki healing music wherever I am. If I can't lay down, 
uh, one of the best things I um, spent some money on actually was the Apple. They're the big headphones that go over your head and um, they, they are ridiculously expensive, but Apple did a really good deal. They did an interest free. I'm not encouraging anybody to get into debt. I, you know, it was a few hundred quid for them. So I think I did it over 12 months and paid a bit each month, but they, they've been really quite life changing in terms of managing sensory overload when I'm in places where I can't manage it in any other way. So if I'm on an airplane or a busy train or a busy place, I'll often put those on and just put some meditation music on and it really does help my nervous system calm down. Um, also changing, yeah, changing the intensity and competitive nature of the physical movement. So a lot of the yoga, I do an awful lot of, um, I really, really love yoga. Um, at the minute I'm practicing something called forest yoga, which is very much, it's physical, but it's very much about a healing, um, a healing practice. And I'm finding that really, really, really helpful. I mean, they're, they're just a few things that I'm doing. I don't think there's a I don't think there's one blueprint for everybody. I think part of this journey is exploring the things that work for each of us. Um, but I felt it was important to share what I was thinking about this morning, about joining the dots and being kind to ourselves and having a psychologically safe space to be able to allow that shadow side out. Because if we don't allow the shadows out, the light won't come in. And one thing I know for sure, and I'm still sat here talking to you, is that it does pass. And no matter how bad those dark nights of the souls were and, and can still be, I know, um, I know they pass. I know they pass um, and I know that brighter days come and I know that there are things that I've definitely found that have made um, the process much easier. And I hope you do too. I hope that's of help. Lots of love.